Good evening, everybody. We are so pleased to have you here. Uh, it's a very important season in San Francisco. I'm Daniela Kirschenbaum of the San Francisco Neighborhood Network. And before I forget, I'd like to remind everybody to turn off the cell phones. Thank you. Um, the San Francisco Neighborhood Network, just very briefly, uh, we are a good planning and good government group. And since 2003, we've been meeting very quietly with politicians, policy makers, and planning professionals. We represent the neighborhoods, and we try to build relationships. And so we really appreciate your taking part. And we want to thank, first and foremost, our candidates. And then we would like to thank all the good people of the Southeast Community Facility. And I would like to especially thank Shakira Simley, Executive Director. Shakira, could you come up? All right, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. That's more like it. That's how we do it in the Bayview. Um, my name is Shakira Simley. I am the executive director here at the Southeast Community Center. And on behalf of the Southeast Community uh, Facility Commission, in addition to the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, we'd like to welcome you all to this space. How many of you, this is your first time here at 1800 Oakdale? Okay, how many of you are veterans of this space? Raise your hand. Fantastic. Um, we are so excited to see um, the amount of civic engagement here in this space and that the uh, League of San uh, sorry, League of Women Voters of San Francisco and the San Francisco Neighborhood Network decided to use this space um, to bring these fantastic candidates. Um, all of you are amazing public servants and um, we are really glad to make sure that this will be a nonpartisan and fair uh, debate. So uh, feel free to ask me if you have any questions. Bathrooms are located right outside. We have amazing um, organic clementines from the San Francisco Produce Wholesale Market. Um, some hetch hetchy water. Um, and so thank you so much for being in this space and I hope to see you all again here soon. Take care, thanks. Good evening and welcome everybody. My name is Leah Edwards and I'm the co-president of the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. The League is a nonpartisan but political organization dedicated to promoting active and informed participation in government. The League works to ensure that all voters have access to nonpartisan, unbiased information so that they are prepared to make their own informed choices on election day. We put on free forums such as this one we produce a pro and con guide on local positions, and we partner with SFGovTV to produce educational segments that explain candidates' platforms, as well as discussion on local ballot measures. The League of Women Voters never supports or opposes candidates, but we do take a stance on issues. You can learn more at our website, lwvsf.org. I would like to welcome up Jill Fox from the Department of Elections to give an election overview. Thanks, Jill. Thanks, Leah. The Department of Elections has been bringing the city and county of San Francisco free, fair, and functional elections since 1878. I have not worked there the whole time. Um, <laughs> it is your city, as we've been saying on bus ads and um, newspaper ads and everywhere else uh, the, for the last few months. It is your city and your choice, and we appreciate your choosing to be a voter on June 5th. I brought enough flyers I, for everybody here. Um, if you didn't catch one on the way in, they're back at the table. <laughs> it has all the addresses, dates, URLs, phone numbers, all that kind of stuff you need to know in order to uh, carry out the function part of the election. Also, if you open it up, there's a surprise inside. This is everything we're voting on um, in this election on June 5th. Oh, how we love to vote. Um, 
it will be a four card ballot throughout the city, so four big cards. Make sure when you get it that you turn it over and because um, they're printed on both sides. Something people forget to do. Um, and if you vote by mail, the ballots are going out the first week in May. You probably have already received your state voter guide. They send one to every household, so you might want to uh, get to know your roommates and, um, and share it. In this flyer, we have both the state um, and the local URL for reading the voter pamphlet voter guide online. Um, which is a way that um, um, which is another way you can get information. All of our voter guides and our uh, online voter guide are in English, Spanish, Chinese, and Filipino. And all of that information is here. I'm going to answer a couple of other frequently asked questions. Uh, if you're all decided, uh, the voting center at City Hall opens on May 7th. So come on down. We are open the last two weekends um, before the election. Uh, a wonderful place to bring your children and they can see you vote in our beautiful City Hall. Um, if you need to register to vote, update your registration, decide to vote by mail, anything you want to know, I'll be in the back um, throughout tonight's debate. And finally, before I do the one minute on how ranked choice voting works, please, we are in desperate need of poll workers for this election. We employ uh, poll workers at our 583 polling places in San Francisco. Yes, you can amaze your friends at all the upcoming parties with we have 583 polling places in San Francisco. Uh, altogether, we need about 3,000 workers. We're about 1,200 short. Uh, if you're interested or you know someone who wants to do their civic duty and earn a stipend for the day, uh, you can see me or even better, come on down to City Hall Monday through Friday um, and come down to our office. We have a recruitment office uh, next to the Department of Elections. You can apply, get tested, get your training class, and get your assignment all in about 30 minutes. So please um, come on down and help us out in this election. So in about 40 days, we're going to be choosing one of these fine people uh, or the other candidates um, for mayor. Uh, since 2004, we've been choosing our candidates for local offices using ranked choice voting. In a nutshell, all the candidates' names will be listed in three columns on the ballot. In column one, mark your first choice. In column two, mark your second choice. Make sure that's a different candidate. In the third column, mark your third choice. Make sure that is a different candidate than your first choice or your second choice. All first choice candidate, all first choice votes are counted, and that will hold um, exactly uh, if no candidate gets 50% plus one vote, then ranked choice voting kicks in. And the last place vote getter is eliminated and uh, the second choice for those voters is redistributed. And that goes on of elimination from the bottom um, and redistribution until a candidate has 50% plus one vote. Remember, that vote could be yours. We have lots more information, both from the Department of Election and from the organization Fair Vote, back on the table that explains a little bit more detail on this. And the department also has a, U a video on ranked choice voting at our website, which is sfelections.org. Again, thanks for being a voter, and uh, enjoy the evening. Thank you so much, Jill, for that helpful overview. We want to thank SFGovTV and the Asian American Journalists Association, which are taping the forum tonight. We also want to thank our co-sponsors for tonight's forum, 
the Asian American Journalists Association of San Francisco, Coalition for San Francisco Neighborhoods, the National Coalition of 100 Black Women San Francisco, San Francisco Beautiful, San Francisco Council of District Merchants Associations, San Francisco Heritage, Mechanics Institute, and the Van Ness Corridor Neighborhoods Coalition. We would also like to thank the San Francisco Wholesale Produce Market, which has generously donated fresh produce, so if anyone would like a snack, please feel free to take some. I am pleased to introduce our moderator for this evening, Bob Butler. Bob Butler is a reporter at KCBS Radio in San Francisco and has served as an independent journalist on the award-winning Chauncey Bailey Project. He also spent eight years on the board of National Association of Black Journalists and served as the president for the last two years. Welcome. Good evening. So uh, we have uh, seven candidates uh, running for mayor tonight. Uh, London Breed is not here because of a scheduling conflict. The candidates will have a chance to present their views on issues affecting the city and to answer your questions about those issues. To submit questions for the candidates, look for a volunteer who is handing out index cards. We'll collect all the questions by 715. Where are the index card holders? Raise your hand so they can find you. I wish to remind you of the ground rules. No literature, campaign signs, or buttons may be distributed or posted inside the meeting room. Candidates and their supporters are expected to be respectful of other candidates and the audience and to help maintain quiet during the forum. Candidates are asked to make no personal attacks on other individuals. <clears throat> Here are the procedures. The candidates will have an opening and closing statements that are one minute each. Each candidate will have one minute to answer questions you will in the audience have submitted, as well as questions that have been submitted in advance. We will have each question answered by three of the candidates proceeding in alphabetical order. Any rebuttals may be included in the candidate's closing statement, which will be, I guess, two minutes. The timekeepers are in the first row. They will hold up yellow cards to signify that you have 15 seconds remaining and a red card when it is time to stop, and I will tell you to stop. We ask that the audience be respectful of the candidates and to maintain quiet during the forum. I ask you to respect that commitment. Every aspect of the forum will be equally fair to all candidates, and all of these candidates collected signatures to get on the ballot, and that's why they are the only ones allowed to participate in the forum. You may have important decisions to make on June 5th. Today's forum will give you an opportunity to be heard. Now, let's begin. Thank you, Angela Aliotto, Michelle Bravo, Richie Greenberg, Jane Kim, Mark Leno, Amy Farrell-Weiss, and Ellen Lee Zhao for attending the forum tonight. So we'll start off with the opening statements in alphabetical order. Timers, are you ready? Let's start with Angela Aliotto. Good evening, everybody. First of all, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Let me just say how amazing it's been the last two and a half, three months to see 300, 400, 500 people come out to learn who the candidates are. This is a crucial election, a crucial election. San Francisco has never had so many poor people on its streets. San Francisco has never had such dirty streets. San Francisco has never had such crime like it is having right now, and the affordability of housing is almost impossible to live in San Francisco. I'm a third generation, um, I was gonna say Italian. I'm a third generation, much more than three generations Italian, but I'm a third generation San Franciscan, born and raised. I'm a civil rights attorney. I fight um, in the courtrooms of America, both state and federal courts, uh, for people who are um, treated differently because of who they are, because of what they are, because of where they live, because of how old they are, or any disability that they have. I wanna be able to fight for you all as the mayor of San Francisco Francisco in a critical, critical time um, of our city's time. history. I'm sorry. So the lady right there has got the. Yeah. Right, she says I'm time. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Michelle Bravo. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Okay. Good evening, District 10. <laughs> this is Michelle Bravo, and I live here with the rest of you. And I'm very, very grateful to be here tonight, and I really want to thank all of you for, for coming out. Uh, 
Right now, the greatest challenge that I see uh, right now is providing residents with affordable housing, livable, safe community as well. The lack of transparency and the rush to build um, housing behavior that's being perpetrated by City Hall doesn't really work now, does it? At least not for me. So <clears throat> I see lots going on in our neighborhood, and I know that I've got heart, I've got a lot in my head, and I need your help to tell me exactly what you need most. So I look forward to hearing your questions, and I, again, thank you so much for coming out. Yay for District 10. Mr. Greenberg. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Richie Greenberg. I'm running for San Francisco mayor, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me, and thank you for the organizers. I live in the Richmond District. I'm here in San Francisco now for approximately 17 years. Uh, I'm a startup consultant, a business advisor, and originally I was born in Queens, New York, which is among the most diverse communities in the United States, and I take that to heart. I take that with me. We have every, back there in, in Queens, we had every possible nationality, religion, race, everything you could think of, and that has been part of me for my entire life. So um, as a startup advisor, I help people, smallest of small mom and pop shops, get their start. This is where I come from. This is what I want to do to help along with installing three core values in my candidacy, which are accountability in City Hall to, do, uh, to uplift the quality of life and time is up. So you're going to have to wait until the next time I get to speak. I respect that. Thank you Thank very you. much. Jane Kim. Good evening. It is really a pleasure to be here today, and I just want to thank the League of Women Voters and all of the hosts for tonight's debate, and thank you all so much for coming. I have had the pleasure and honor of serving our great city a little over the last decade, starting out on the Board of Education and now serving on the Board of Supervisors. And previous to that, I was a youth community organizer for six years, and that's how I actually came to know the Southeast Community Facilities and served as an attorney at Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. And over the last decade, I've been proud to work on a number of issues with you. One, making San Francisco the only city in the nation to make community college free for all of our residents. I'm also proud to have negotiated and won more affordable and middle income housing than any member of the board over the last seven years. And I've been proud to work on the fight for 15 to raise the wage of our minimum wage workers to $15 an hour. Um, and finally, um, I have been proud um, to work with you on eviction protection controls, um, Vision Zero, and other things that make our city a safe, healthy, and balanced place to live. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mark Leno. Good evening, everyone. I also want to thank the Neighborhood Network and the League of Women Voters and the Community Facility for bringing us all together tonight. I'm a 40-year small business owner here in San Francisco, having also served on the County Board of Supervisors six years, representing you in the State Assembly and eight years in the State Senate. We raised the statewide minimum wage to $15 an hour, as well as having authored San Francisco's affordable housing ordinance, the inclusionary zoning ordinance, with thousands of units of affordable housing being built since then. I'm running for mayor because I believe it's time for a new direction at City Hall. Our crises of homelessness, housing affordability, and the crime rate in the streets, the mess in the streets, the challenges to our small businesses and the character of our neighborhood are all greatly at risk. It's time for change. And I thank you for affording us the opportunity and inviting all of these candidates here tonight. We don't often get to be together tonight. And I'm so sorry that a Supervisor Breed couldn't join us. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Farrow-Weiss. Hello, everyone. I'm Amy Farrow-Weiss. The time was ch for change was actually in 2011. Are you with me? There was a global financial collapse. I started to push back against profit-driven displacement. The planning department actually broke the law for a Chase Bank to displace three local businesses in my neighborhood. I had just graduated with a master's degree from SF State in organizational development, and I decided instead of just having a righteous no to displacement, which is important, we needed to come up with a strategic yes for inclusive, culturally enriching, and sustainable development, 
and I've been working on that policy ever since. Whoever becomes mayor must show a significant reduction in the amount of people living in crisis on our streets, which is about 3,000 to 3,500. I have a plan for that. Whoever becomes mayor must make environmental justice for Bayview Hunters Point and Treasure Island a main focus. It's the time is long past due for that. We must address economic gaps and opportunities for our education system. And I have a platform that's ahead of my time, thank but you. it's all very much able to be thank implemented. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ellen Lee Zhao. My name is Ellen Lee Zhao. I used to live in this neighborhood. I worked at a crisis intervention, a couple blocks from here. I also work at Family Mosaic Project, a couple, couple blocks from here. I have been in San Francisco for the last 32 years. I was nominated by the San Francisco Coalition of Good Neighborhoods from all 11 districts. I am here to stand up for you. I have no reason to be a mayor, but I stand up for you. There's so many corrupted behavior at City Hall. If you don't stand up right now today, from here on this year, you will be, continue to be fooled by the people at City Hall. I am a city and county government employee. I work for public health. I am a behave health clinician. I train people how to behave. And I know the corrupted behavior in and out. I am a union bargaining team with the mayor's office and all of the board of supervisors. That's how I know that many of the corrupted behavior, if it is not stopped, then you are in trouble. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we have a, a gentleman who is also running for mayor as a writing candidate, Antoine Rogers. You have two minutes. Right here, two minutes. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I'm a writing candidate for mayor, as he just explained. Um, I'm just trying to get into an event to debate with these um, candidates, and I just want my due process. I just want to help the community, not just the community, the city of San Francisco. I believe I'm a good mayor. I could be a good mayor for the city. I'm up under a lot of pressure the way they treat me around here. You know, they won't be fair and let me explain what I have to explain up on the podium with the rest of the candidates, and I just really think that's not fair to me are San Francisco. And I don't want to cause no trouble. I want to help people. That's all I want to do. My uncle Adam Rogers was Mayor Alioto right-hand man. And all he did was help the community when he was here. He got jobs for the community. He, he was respected in the community. And now I just want a chance to help people. That's all I want to do. And I really would like to be up there, but I can't get up there, but I don't want to miss the next debate because, you know, people are missing me for whatever reason. I just want to help people. That's all I want to do. Thank you for listening. So we're going to go to our questions now. And the way this is going to work, we have basically, we're going to work in threes. Each candidate will be asked, each set of three candidates will be asked a question. You have one minute to respond, and I can't ask the same question for all the candidates. I will, I wish I could, but that'll just be too long. So the very first question, in light of the fact that we're here in the Bayview, Harness Point is right down the road, in light of all the disclosure of fraudulent soil samples from Harness Point Shipyard, do you support a moratorium on housing development at the shipyard? Angela, Michelle, and then Mr. Greenberg. Do I get a minute? One minute. Absolutely, I support a moratorium on it. It's unconscionable that they would even consider for one second building on top of the toxins that are down that have been in the research for year after year after year. Um, I had a lawsuit out here uh, against Lennar years ago, and it's still the same old thing when it comes to the toxins. It's not acceptable, and they would never do it in another neighborhood in this city. It's always Bayview Hunter's Point that gets the raw end of the stick, always. Ms. Bravo. Is it my turn? Okay. So I need a little support here, so I'm gonna use my notes. Thanks for your patience. So 
<clears throat> San Francisco leadership at City Hall got us into the pickle we're in. Uh, when they did not properly plan for the influx of the wealthy tech workers who now need housing. Everyone agrees we need more affordable housing. The issue is we need responsible development, which hasn't always happened. Um, Lennar continues to build. We've got 300 families living on the Hunters Point Shipyard development. Let's not forget Treasure Island development. Five billion dollars is going to be poured into that development. We need to check both sites to make sure they are not toxic. A moratorium? Absolutely. We need to protect citizens. Those 300 families that are on that possibly toxic soil, we need to make sure they are safe and anyone else who goes into any of these new developments are safe. Thanks so much. I agree as well. I think that we should do as much research, as much uh, accountability. We need to ensure that no one is building and putting anyone in harm's way, that no, uh, we don't have any health issues. And I would agree with that, not only in Hunters Point, but anywhere, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the city, anywhere in the state, we cannot be building anywhere, regardless if there's a, 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 uh, a uh, crisis where we don't have enough housing, that is not an excuse to go ahead and be building on top of something like that. That's, I, would, I would support a moratorium, yes. Thank you. The next uh, question goes to uh, Jane Kim, Mark Leno, and Amy Farrah Weiss. Uh, and keeping on the theme of uh, Superfund sites, Treasure Island, What's going to be done about Treasure Island? Right now, there are a lot of problems there when it comes to the soil, but all the, the uh, all of the toxins that have left been left behind by the Navy, which bases do that all the time. What are we going to do about Treasure Island? So I, I represent the district, which includes Treasure Island, and we are watching what is happening in the shipyards very closely. Tetra Tech plays a different role um, in Treasure Island, um, but we do meet regularly with the residents and also the Navy RAB board um, on a regular basis, ensuring that the cleanup process is happening as it should be um, with full oversight by the Navy. Um, we, none of the land gets conveyed from the federal government to San Francisco until it is fully cleaned. And we are fully, we are also working with the state California Department of Public Health um, to ensure that there is an additional layer of oversight on the work that the federal government is doing on that land. Um, when that land is conveyed to San Francisco, it will be 100% toxic free before we build any housing on this site. Thank you, Mark Leno. Whether we're talking about the shipyard or Treasure Island, we have to make sure always that safety and health takes top priority. That has not unfortunately been the case to date. And all you have to do is look at the health disparities right here in the Bayview. A child born today is likely to live 14 fewer years than a child born in Russian Hill. This is the severity, this is the outcome, this is the ramification of moving forward without certainty that the land is clean and that it has been mitigated. And unfortunately, the Navy has let us down, but also those with whom they have contracted has let us down. And moving forward, we have to make the top priority, safety and health. We have cancer clusters that we don't understand. We have exorbitant rates of asthma that we don't understand in certain parts of the city. Thank you. That is environmental injustice. Thank you. Amy farrell -Weiss. I went to college at De Anza Community College and took a class my first quarter. Uh, it was interdisciplinary with environmental studies and Native American philosophy and belief. And so I just want to give a shout out to the California community college system that actually framed my mind to think about these things and taught me about Love Canal and what's happening at Bayview, Hunters Point and Treasure Island is our Love Canal, which was a super fun site where they built a development upon a toxic waste dump for corporations. So I wanna build upon, I think what Jane Kim and Mark Leno said was very astute in this way, but also we need to hold Nancy Pelosi accountable. We need to hold Kamala Harris accountable. We need to hold Dianne Feinstein accountable because they are our spokespeople at the federal level and they should actually be doing the work to make sure that Tetra Tech 
and the Navy are accountable in this way. They're from San Francisco. They should be standing with the community of San Francisco, including Thank Bayview you. Hunters Point advocates Thank and you. Green Action. Thank you. So the next questions are to uh, Ellen, uh, Angela, and Michelle. I'm going to just use first names, what the heck. Um, <laughs> and this is a problem. The question has to do with the Bayview, but it's a Bay Area-wide problem. Um, what are we going to do about illegal trash dumping in the Bayview? Because you see somebody dump the trash, and you call the police, and they say, well, if I didn't see him do it, we can't do anything about it. How do we change that? Am I going first? No, Ellen. no, no, no. Oh. Jamie. Okay, thank oh. you. <clears throat> you ask the right person at the right time <laughs> and the right location. I stand up for Bayview for many years because I'm a public health worker and I have seen many of these problems related to poor condition. Now, if people in Bayview had a little bit more money and if people in Bayview had a little bit more time and have some backgrounds like Angela, sue the hell out of them, see what they do. <laughs> it's because we Bayview people. I keep saying we are in Bayview. We take pill, we chill, we steal. It's because we don't have enough resources to help people in here. Now, to install surveying camera is not hard. But why the government is not helping us? Because we are poor. Because we are poor, we are generation of poor systems in Bayview. And I stood up for you for many years in here. Now it's about time. Remember my theme, a government accountability. If the people in charge are not doing anything about illegal dumping, tell them to get out of their job and let someone else who know how to do it and do their job. Thank you. Thank you. Angela. And it's, it's all, always particularly worse here in Bayview Hunters Point. It never fails. However, I have to say, this is actually a problem citywide. People come out and just dump their entire garbage can right on the curb of the street as though there is no repercussions for it. It's unconscionable. But for Bayview Hunters Point, people literally fill up their car to come out here to dump. And in my opinion, I believe that they not only need to be cited, but also have an infraction. And I was highly criticized for saying this, but I don't understand why anybody thinks it's okay that people just go throw dirty trash all over and make it a very unsanitary situation where people are living, people are walking, people are having their children uh, walk down the street with their children and the elderly. In my opinion, they ought to be fined, and after two or three fines, there ought to be a point at which it becomes a serious uh, act as far as the law is concerned. I don't think we should just ignore ignore it and say we don't have enough police officers to attend to it. We need to stop it. Thank you. Michelle. So what I've noticed since living in uh, Bayview, District 10, is we have quite a few cameras at the stoplights. I don't see what the issue would be about getting some more cameras put around in strategic places where we've had dumping again and again. And why don't we hit up some of these technology companies that are already here to see if they could fund some of that for us. Uh, you know, they're not really making uh, too much of a contribution in this way since they have some tax breaks is what my understanding is. So maybe they could donate some money for cameras to help this part of the city. I think that might be a good idea. Secondarily, in terms of the police, yeah, they're pretty much overwhelmed. Most of the reasons you know, for their overwhelm is because many of them don't live here. About 70% of the SFPD do not live in San Francisco. I have a plan for hoping to get all of these first responders, cops, firefighters, back into the city, and yes, so that we can have them here when we have our next big earthquake. There's a lot going on. We need them living here. Thank Thanks you. So very much. Next round with uh, Richie, Jane, and Mark. So we're going to talk about an issue that we know affects some neighborhoods a lot more than others. This is a neighborhood issue, the issue of homelessness. Building more affordable housing is always is great, but you got to admit that the only solution to these, or is the only solution to these street encampments and drug abuse, is it law enforcement, or is there something else we can do in the neighborhoods, especially we're talking about the Tenderloin, we're talking about other areas with a lot of homeless, like along Market Street. What can we do? So I'm glad you asked the question. I'm probably uh, the most, uh, the candidate that has the most aggressive, bold plan on this. So I intend to declare a state of emergency within days of me being sworn in as mayor. What does this mean? 
So I will immediately bring in, I'm going to identify a couple of different areas within, uh, within the city to, to bring in FEMA-style uh, 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 trailers, mobile homes that you would see after an earthquake or a uh, hurricane. Then we will bring in, along with that in the center, like a safe living center, we will bring in, uh, we'll set up clinics, we'll bring in uh, addictive specialists, uh, personal storage, and we will bring everyone who is homeless, all the most uh, chronically homeless, and bring them to that location so that way they're off the streets, they are safe, they are warm, they are clean, and we can then triage what they, those who are mentally ill uh, versus those who are able-bodied and able to get a job. This is what my plan is, this is what I would do as mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. A minute is very difficult to answer this full question, so I have a full platform online at janekim.org. Um, but in, the, in our city, we currently have about 3,000 to 3,500 people that are chronically homeless living on our streets and often are also very sick and also um, substance abuse issues. Um, one of my projects in the South of Market was to build out a 24-hour medical shelter um, staffed by nurses, clinicians, and psychologists. I stayed in one of our shelters and I learned that actually our minimum wage staff members often don't have the resources or skills to actually address the demographic that's coming in. We have to change that. We have to treat what is happening on our streets as a public health crisis. And I believe that we can build 1,500 medical shelter beds to take off at least 50% of the chronic homelessness that we're seeing in San Francisco today. Now, our larger homeless count is much larger. There's about 20,000 unique individuals that interface with our homeless support system every single year. And for the vast majority of people who are sleeping in cars, couch surfing, um, we need to expand Thank our you. rent subsidy program and our affordable Thank you. housing program. <laughs> Mark. At marklendo.com, you can see a very serious, detailed, and doable plan to end street homelessness by 2020. That's the 3,500 folks who are living on our streets. We'd make use of 1,500 or so unused single room occupancies that we know are available. Also, we need to expand, at least for the time being, our shelter and navigation center capacity because we've got a waiting list of over 1,000 people every night who would like to get off the streets. First and foremost, we need to make sure that those who have a home stay in their home. 70% of those living on our street were living under a roof in San Francisco when they became homeless. And so we have to stop these no-cause evictions. You're a good tenant, you're paying your rent on time, and you get a knock on the door and you're evicted. I would take speculators who are abusing the Ellis Act illegally to court so that we can stop these illegal and inappropriate evictions due to the Ellis Act. Thank you, Mark. So next we've got uh, Amy, Ellen, and Angela. As mayor, what would your plan be to connect Visitation Valley to the rest of the city by, the quote here is, sufficient public transportation? Well, I can't help but not speak to the last question just a little bit because we currently spend $30 million on a move-along strategy with DPW and SFPD for our encampment and shelter shortage crisis. I have developed and piloted over the last two and a half years a plan to get 3,000 people out of crisis conditions into safe organized spaces. When it comes to Visitation Valley and public transportation, that is something that we were asked also over on the west side. How is it that we increase the N. Judah public transportation system? As mayor, I will start a task force to focus on these different neighborhoods that are having challenges with accessing public transportation and figure out how we can actually be doing things of, over the next uh, few years because we have a year and a half as this next mayor uh, to be able to actually put together that plan and then four years to be able to put it into play uh, with the next mayor's term. So task force and then implement. Thank you. Ellen. Well, you asked the right person at the right time. <laughs> I was the family social worker at Visitation Valley Children's Center. And we have six programs, six centers. I was a supervisor. So here's what I know about Visitation Valley. Again, goes back to poverty. You know the city back in the 50s and 60s, why they built all this isolated area for people, just to isolate them. So in order for us to help each other, I go back to government accountability. There are many books has been cooked. 
the money is not going to you. I stand up to run for mayor because I do want to get back the money for you. Each one of you include the Visitation Valley residents. So everyone can have the ego chance of public transportation, school buses, and social service that really truly needed for the people who really wanted to get out poverty and be educated and become lawyers like Angela and sue the hell our people. So hold them <laughs> accountable, especially public employees. I'm telling you, Thank I have you. enough of them. Thank you. Angela? <laughs> I feel like Ellen's keeping me in business. I, I just have to say one quick word about homelessness. Yesterday, the United Nations gave me a certificate of honor for my homeless plan. And at that, it was a, it was a, a um, three hour seminar. And at that, they said San Francisco had about 18,000 to 20,000 general homeless population, 3,500 to 6,000 chronic. So it's a much bigger issue um, than we are ever reading about in the papers. As far as Visitation Valley, there have been parts of this town that have always been separated from the rest of the town. And as far as MTA and, and, and the Muni situation goes, we need to have extended lines, we need to have new buses, and we need to have, uh, well, this is gonna sound you know, cliche, but they need to be on time. And they have uh, notoriously not gone to certain areas of our town. And Bayview Hunters Point and Visitation Valley have always had less lines and, and indeed redlining to the point that they don't even come here after certain hours of the day. Thank you. That is unconscionable Thank racism. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's so difficult in one minute. So I know, I, but you know, that's why you're up there because you know how to really get to the point. <laughs> All of you. So uh, listen, this is a, a question that um, I thought about. Um, transportation problems affect the entire Bay Area. Uh, there is a measure on the ballot called Regional Measure 3, which will increase Bay Bridge tolls, uh, all the bridge tolls except for the Golden Gate Bridge by a dollar, up to $3 by 2025. Now this is designed to pay for transportation projects all over the Bay Area, but the people coming into San Francisco, who live in San Francisco, who live in, in Foster City and Hayward, we're the ones paying the toll for the entire Bay Area. Is it fair? You know, to have the citizens paying this cost, who are driving to work, who are driving their kids to school, how can we shift that burden of infrastructure from these drivers to corporations, such as, you know, this one tech company which has, instead of having its drivers come across the Bay Bridge, they put them in a bus and they pay one toll as opposed to 50 or 60. I know that's a long question. Michelle Bravo, take it away. So in terms of transportation, yeah, we've, we've got a lot going on right now. What I would like to do is, you know, find a way to get things like Uber, things like Lyft, you know, maybe we need to start charging them a little more um, or something. Right now, they're not registered as businesses in the city of San Francisco. I, I have to register my business, so what the heck? So we need to do more to get these folks and uh, responsible for contributing more to our infrastructure. Our roads look terrible. You know, let's, let's, let's put the onus on these tech companies who've started with these great ideas and make them pay to play in San Francisco. That way the rest of us don't have to. Thanks, I'm actually Thank you. done. Um, so I am against this, uh, this measure. I don't think that the answer is just putting, it, it's a tax, it's a burden, it's an expense. Uh, it's unfair, it will not really do anything. I understand it's also supposed to be a uh, deterrent for people to use their car and come into the city, and that's not gonna help. It's just gonna make the cost of, of living higher. Um, uh, my point of view is that we need to look at a, a accountability. We need to look at where all the money is going uh, in the construction programs, the heads of the different departments. Muni is a rogue agency, they need to be reined in. There's so many other ways to be able to cut costs, to cut spending, and not have to stick it to the, uh, the drivers. Um, also, just a side note, that uh, Uber drivers, the drivers themselves are registered and have licenses with the city, so they are paying into the city. Uh, the city, uh, the ca so just to dispute that there, uh, there is some money coming to the city through Uber, just not the corporation itself. We just Thank need you. more. Thank you. Jane. 
So um, Regional Measure 3, which I do support, is going to fund major transportation projects throughout the Bay Area, including a second, a design for a second Trans Bay 2 for either BART or Caltrain, which we sorely need. Um, now, um, drivers are not the only ones who pay transportation fees. We have a downtown impact fees that businesses pay for transportation. Also, all the commuter shuttle buses pay $7 every time they stop at one of our uh, white curbs or red curbs to pick up passengers. Now, all of this needs to be updated, and we have to think about what is everyone's fair share in terms of what they commit and uh, invest in public transportation. But everyone does pay into our public transportation fee. Now, the one category of folks that don't are TNCs, Uber and Lyft. San Francisco is preempted from regulating TNCs because this is under the jurisdiction of the state. Supervisor Aaron Peskin has introduced a commercial, I mean, a gross receipts measure for the number of ballot, specifically targeting TNC companies, which I am co-sponsoring. It is actually not true. You don't have to have a business license as a TNC driver here in San Francisco. Thank you. And so we need Thank to figure you. out how to Thank you. balance that. Thank you. <laughs> I know it's tough. Uh, so our next uh, round of questions, uh, Mark, Amy, and uh, Ellen. What's your plan to Number one, finish the Central Subway. And number two, get it all the way to North Beach. Yeah. Fisherman's Wharf. Fisherman's Wharf, yeah. The city is unfortunately far behind in getting this completed. And that seems to be a, uh, not an exception, but seemingly the rule on a number of these large infrastructure projects. Yes, it will get to Chinatown. It should go further north to North Beach, and the tunnel's there. We're going to have to build the station, and it should consider going even further. We have just about exhausted all of our surface capabilities for moving goods and people across town with our buses and trolleys and now scooters and the bicycle lanes, which are important. Uh, we need to provide dependable and safe alternatives to the automobile but we should be investing more in subways. Cities our size, around, our size around the world have much more comprehensive subway systems than we. And when we do move forward with the new Trans Bay Tube, that can be a new subway line out, Geary Boulevard, it could conceivably be a new sub line, subway line out to Mission Bay. Thank you. It's important whoever is our next mayor is able to assess and review these projects and see what their timelines are and make sure they're on track to be moving forward. I remember when this was being discussed years ago and there was the opportunity to keep drilling uh, because it would actually be cheaper if we had kept drilling at that point to prepare for it to go all the way out to Fisherman's Wharf, but there was a decision not to do that. And I wanna highlight this is happening all over the city right now because there was a park that was put in over in the, the Mission neighborhood and all of the stores around there flood whenever there's a, a big rain because there isn't a cistern to catch the water underneath. And instead of when they built this new park, they had this opportunity to actually uh, you know, connect the dots and do a few things at once. And the city doesn't do that. They don't do that with the paving of the roads. They'll you know, take up a, a road and then they'll do something with it you know, the next year or the next couple months. So it's important for us to have a mayor who's paying attention to that and make sure we're doing everything that we can at once. Thank you. Oh, my bad. So sorry. <laughs> I just kept going because I didn't get stopped. Come on. You see the red card? It's an honor system. Well, you're talking to the right person at the right time, at the right location. <laughs> My church is in Chinatown. I go to Chinatown every day, and I am multi-dialect, and people complain to me directly. I have filed many complaints with board of supervisors, and this is what I heard from the people, from the community, corruption. People are getting paid, and people are not getting paid. They are fighting underneath the ground. And you and I have been fooled about the book. Again, when I elected as mayor, I will hire a third party to review the government book, to hold them accountable. Otherwise, you and I continue to pay a lot of taxes, especially property taxes, sales tax, whatever the tax is going to people's book, but not your wallet. That is not okay. Um, 
It has been impact a lot of people, especially the people doing business nearby downtown and Chinatown area. When I elected as mayor, I will have open bids. Whoever bid that project, find them, kick them out, and get someone else and sue the hell out of them again. Thank you. And ask Thank Angela you. to sue them. <laughs> really, people are not accountable. Thank you. <laughs> next. We've touched on this a little bit already. Nobody likes investors building condos that sit empty. Nobody likes evictions and displacement. As mayor, how would you address housing policies to bring the NIMBYs and the YIMBYs together? Ellen, I'm a discrimination lawyer. <laughs> just, just, just so you know that. I don't do all that other kind of suing. At any rate, this is a massive problem in San Francisco. What happened is after 2012, and by the way, our homeless plan that was absolutely working was stopped, the tech industry came to San Francisco and it came with tax incentives. And we didn't even give our small businesses tax incentives, but we gave it to billionaires. And so when they came, they brought with them many, many, many thousands of employees. They wanted their employees to live here. Okay, but we're already living here. So what happens is they start buying up the buildings. And it's not specifically just the tech industry. It's big industries coming and taking over the city. And then they evict people, and they evict the poor, the poor first, and then they redo the whole building. And by the time it's over, we're out of 12,000 Latinos are gone in the last three years. The African-American community is down to 4% from 15%. It's absolutely disgraceful. What we need to do is density and below affordable housing Thank you. housing Thank you, you. you could have kept taking your picture and I could have finished but you, the hey, whole you know what? idea hey, hey come on it's an honor system see now if you won't if you can't follow the rules here what happens when you get in the office well, some, some rules are meant to be broken okay I've been pretty pretty outspoken on my Twitter feed about the uh, the Yimbies. Most of the folks who started the whole YIMBY movement are tech execs. I just want to repeat that, just in case you didn't know that. And so what I'm seeing, if you think I'm uninformed on a few things, a lot of the folks, you know, these tech execs, they're not so well informed about stuff either. So I would say educating them and their employees on what's what uh, is probably a good idea. Um, Mayor Lee approved enormous tax cuts for tech companies to come in, creating many high-paying jobs, you know, without a long-term plan. We know this. So, you know, the answer is in terms of the Yimbies, well, let's, uh, let's further educate them on what's what. That would be my answer for now. Thanks. Thank you. Richie. Uh, you asked about how we could follow the rules if we were in in office. The, that was a, the that, that was that was not fair. I shouldn't have said to, that. Is to change the rules. That's what you do. <laughs> so anyway, Yimby and Nimby. This is what looks to me as if we've got a West Side versus East Side more or less uh, argument here. I live on the West Side. I think I'm the only candidate for office here that is living on the West Side. I live in the Richmond District. And uh, if you look at the YIMBY website, you will see specifically as part of their whole plan and their platform is they call single family ownership structural racism. This is absolutely asinine. Uh, we need instead to be calling out to shout out and to, to put the YIMBYs back in their place. I think that they are uh, a, rogue, a rogue group that uh, instead what we need to be doing is looking over the city's uh, needs you have different needs on one side versus you do on the other. We need to instead concentrate on making sure that any building is done in a responsible manner and that we do not want to throw the families out. One, two, and three bedroom apartments is Time what we Time is need. up. Thank you. Damn. It's harder on me than it is on them. And I do have to apologize. I didn't, I didn't try to single you out on saying that. I was trying to be funny, and it wasn't very funny to say that. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. I will not sue you. <laughs> <laughs> so next, next question. There's been a lot of talk about um, redeveloping the mid-market area. Um, do you support that? And if so, how would you do it? 
So under my predecessor's time, there was a discussion of turning the mid-market area into a redevelopment area plan. We can no longer do that because um, we dissolved, or the governor um, dissolved redevelopment as a, as a tool um, in, uh, within state law. So that, that dream has, has unfortunately passed away. And it's unfortunate because tax increment has been one of the biggest tools that we have used to build affordable and middle-income housing here in the city, whether it is in Mission Bay where we're achieving 30% affordable middle-income housing and Trans Bay where we're hitting 30 to 35% of affordable and middle-income housing. Um, bonding on tax increment has been um, one of our biggest sources of building affordable housing. Now we are looking for other ways to build affordable housing here in San Francisco. Uh, the $310 million affordable housing bond was an important first step. Um, Santa Clara recently passed a $1 billion housing and homelessness bond, and that's something that I'm committed to studying to see what it would cost um, here in San Francisco to, to do and what Thank we you. could do with that funding. Thank you. Mark. As we proceed to revitalize mid-market or any other part of town, and when we see many new jobs being created by new industries, the one thing we've been overlooking is local hiring. Local hiring, we need to work with these industries, creating the new jobs to make sure that they are not all filled by people coming in from outside San Francisco. Some of them will be highly technical and that will be necessary, but we need to break down what kind of jobs they will be. When we locally hire, that not only benefits that worker and that worker's family, but it means that there won't be the displacement, the eviction of somebody oftentimes a tenant. It also means that we don't have to build a new housing unit for that worker because that worker already lives here and we don't have to expand muni capacity or road capacity because that worker is already traveling through San Francisco. Local hiring is a must and it's something I will be very focused on as mayor of San Francisco. Thank you. Amy. I'll build off of what Mark was saying. Everybody should be alarmed about the central SOMA plan right now because currently 50,000 new tech office jobs are being proposed to build up and there's only about 7,500 housing units that are being proposed in that same plan. How many people were here in the late 90s uh, when there was the first tech boom displacement? How many people were here for the second tech boom displacement after uh, the global financial collapse? You know, it didn't make any sense to me in 2011 that there was the Twitter tax breaks and there was an approach to draw in business and change the tax code without figuring out how we could have a new type of economy that truly serves the essential needs of our residents and workforce while keeping within our planetary limits. So we need a new type of economy in San Francisco. We also could have, back in 2011, talked about a vacancy tax. I'm the Thank only you. candidate that actually has a plan for how Thank we do you. that. This is a long question, but the bottom line is, how do you get these tech companies and these very profitable companies um, to share their success with the city through maybe uh, mandatory financial donations to operate in San Francisco and programs to educate and donate materials like cameras and printers and, how, and for the schools and things like that? <clears throat> so you're talking to the right person. <laughs> I have been living in the city for 32 years, working for the government for almost 15 years, and I represent the government. I represent many workers and many departments. In order for us to hold big companies and two powerful people accountable, we have to deal with the election first. The election itself is already tied into people who are having money behind them. When you see a lot of TV ads, newspaper ads, and every place you see similar people, and that's exactly what it means. Government corruption, they are collided. It's, well, San Francisco is pretty well known, pay to play. It got to be stopped, guys. I stand up for you, really. If you want to have a better San Francisco, if you want to, want the powerful people, how powerful could it be? We have 900,000 residents. If you all stand up and tell them, no, then they will go away from us. You know that? We are the people power. It's just that we have to stand together and united. We stand. We should. It's Thank time. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 
San Francisco um, has a major problem right now, other than the obvious homelessness, dirty streets, affordable housing, and crime. And it's that nobody gets along. Coalition creating in this government is extremely important. If we had a group of the high-tech people, the low-tech people, government, and the community sitting together so that we can tell them, they're so totally separated, it's amazing. I've really learned it in the last three months. They don't talk to each other, they don't know each other, they don't know what each other's needs are. They must come into the same room because they have been extremely generous, the tech industry, but it's been extremely generous to what they want to give to. They come to town without a plan, there's no infrastructure, there's no, I mean, from sidewalks to the streets to the sewers, there's no infrastructure. We need to sit down at the same table with them and have them give to us what we need to make the city livable again. It's just simply not viable again. But we have to stop the divisions that are rampant throughout Thank the you. city. Thank you. So prior Prior to starting my small business in San Francisco, I worked in the video games industry, so I actually do come from tech. So it's not all tech is bad or anything like that, because again, I did work for video game companies like Konami of America, okay? So, <clears throat> as mayor of San Francisco, I would encourage and personally work with technology companies like Twitter, Salesforce, and Yelp. So community forums are held on a regular basis, which include longtime San Franciscans as well as transplants. So we all know firsthand what these technology companies are doing to financially contribute, specifically to echo uh, Angela's, you know, what she just said, um, to financially contribute and directly support our community. If everyone in San Francisco feels included, informed, and supported as a community, um, we'll all feel less afraid, angry, and more inspired to trust these companies and their offerings that they uh, bring to San Francisco and the world. Thanks. Thank you. So one of the big issues in San Francisco has to do with who gets to build where and what. Um, housing development issues come before the Planning Commission over and over and over again. And there have been, you know, allegations of cronyism and things like that, but what kind of appointments will you make to the Planning Commission, and how will you make sure they make decisions in the, in the, in the, in the resident's interest? Great question. I have actually been to several different uh, community uh, uh, hearings. Specifically, uh, I was at the Balboa Reservoir uh, just to see what's being proposed, just to see what's happening out there. And I am appalled in that uh, it looks like the, the builders are wanting to do what is best for them, what is the most cost effective to them, what would be uh, best for their bottom line. And this is a problem, and I was alluding to this just before, is that in my point of view, we have to do whatever we can to ensure that we are not pushing out our families, our elderly seniors, or uh, those that are uh, disabled. And why is this? I just see constantly uh, proposals for the number of uh, units that are going to be built. We don't need to be looking at unit and number of units. We need to look at the character. And I would demand, I would want to ensure that we will build one, two, and three bedroom apartment units, not simply what is the best for Thank them. You. Thank you. Thank you. So our zoning map is this map of what we believe builds a healthy city. So how much housing, office, manufacturing, hotel, parks, and in what neighborhoods. Um, so this map is really should be a reflection of what we believe a balanced and healthy city looks like. So our planning commission plays a very important role in shaping the future of our San Francisco neighborhoods. Um, 80% of our commercial and residential development is happening in the district that I represent, and so I spent quite a bit of time doing land use and housing work. And so when looking to see who we can appoint to our commission, I want someone um, who understands our neighborhoods, has spent time working in our communities, also understands technical um, details around zoning, but also back of the envelope numbers, because developers will often say that they can't afford to build mo uh, more affordable or middle income housing or pay higher transit impact fees or build open space and recreational centers. And that's why it's important for people to understand the back financing, um, because we know that developers make a tremendous amount of money in the city. And we want to make sure they share the Thank value you. of what they're building with Thank our community. You.
whether we're talking about the Planning Commission or the Building Inspection Commission or the Police Commission, I would take a page out of the playbook of Mayor Moscone back in the 1970s, Mayor Agnos in the 1980s, and create a commission on commissions so that people from the neighborhoods, all of you, could apply for a commission to make recommendations to my administration as to who should serve on commissions. So they're not political patron positions, but they are filled by neighborhood folks who have an expertise in the issue area that that commission serves. Please tell me why at the Department of Building Inspection, you need to pay an expediter to get the permit that they should be presenting to you because you live here in San Francisco. These departments should be customer service and they should be serving our needs. And Thank that's you. what a commission should make sure happens. Thank you. Proposition I, when I first saw that, I thought they were trying to kick the giants out, but thank goodness that's not what this is. It states in part that San Francisco has to oppose attempts by professional sports teams to walk out on public debt. Now we know across the Bay we had Mount Davis and the Raiders are moving to Las Vegas. We know the Warriors had the arena remodeled, they're moving to San Francisco. Do you support Prop I or do you oppose Prop I? So we have the originator of Prop I, the author of Prop I here today. Do you want to take a stand? Uh, we were just talking about this beforehand. And when I ran for mayor in 2015, I actually thought that it was a terrible idea for Ed Lee to say that for his legacy, he wanted to have a sports arena in a time where we were having affordable housing crisis and we were having a homelessness crisis. We did not need a new sports arena in San Francisco, and especially to take the Warriors away from Oakland at a time when there was so much pride. Why is it that that was happening? That wasn't necessary. So if we're talking about having reparations for this, let's make sure that the Warriors uh, are actually working with Oakland still to increase economic vitality for the people that were left behind. And I know that the A's are also trying to leave that area as well. But it's so important for us to make sure that we're supporting economic Thank opportunity Thank you. and not taking it away. Thank you. Well, you're talking to the right person. <laughs> I have been living in a city, I'm so busy as a government uh, employee working full time and I don't have any other time other than volunteer in the community. So I'm not like paying attention to sports. So my answer to this is neutral. I am not yes, I'm not no because I do need time to study and how it impact. But as a social worker, I always do assessment. When there's a problem, I would go ask people who are impacted, who are nearby and who are working there and evaluate and had a town hall meeting and ask people for input. And then we will do from there. And I want to thank you for the opportunity today. I have been bullied for many of the forums. I was not invited. Today, I'm really glad and coming back to my neighborhoods in here. I want to thank you for that and for the organizers tonight. And also, because I live in the city for so long, and be because I'm a female and an immigrant and I'm a mom, and I grow up in church, there's a lot of things happen. It's because people doing things behind the scene that you are not... Thank you. Well, excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Amy, I'm not sure how long you've been here, but it's the San Francisco Warriors. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I grew up with the San Francisco Warriors, and they took them away. So now we're bringing them back home where I think they should be. Do I think that the uh, stadium is a good idea? I'm not so sure because of all the traffic and everything else, but I'm delighted that they're coming home. I was also the legislator that did Pac Bell Park because I thought it was very important to keep our giants. I am the mother of four children, the grandmother of five, and I think sports are eternally important for our youth. They need to be involved, they need to be active in sports, and they need to be proud of their city. So I think it's absolutely wonderful that we have the Giants and having the Warriors come home, um, and I'm so sorry that we lost the 49ers to Santa Clara. That was really painful, and it was painful for this community, and no, I vote no on I. Thank you. So, I'm gonna... oh, oh, sorry, Michelle, no, my, my bad. 
Oh, wait a minute. That was right. Prop I, that was it. Could you repeat the question so I'm clear this time? Well, the question was, do you support or oppose Prop I? But that was, we already had our three speakers. So we're actually now going to move to closing statements. It's, it's that time already. It is. It is that time. So we're going to go in reverse order this time. And first, Antoine, come on up. Sir, thank you. Um, I, I have an issue about um, the people. First of all, I've been in San Francisco all my life for about 56 years, you want to say. Um, I watched San Francisco grow, a lot of construction work going on out here, and I watched the city grow. When I say grow, I mean high rises, just tremendously big where to where every citizen in San Francisco supposed to own a home from three decades ago. No one owns, owns a home. It seemed like everyone been pushed out. And if I'm mayor, I'm going to put a freeze on construction work until they hire citizens from San Francisco. Like I said, everyone all my friends and family supposed to have a home. We've been here so long and this city has grown. So the first thing I would do is put a freeze on construction work, make sure they start hiring 50% of the residents, and if they don't hire them, we won't build. Simple as that. Ellen, two minutes. My name is Ellen Lee Zhao. My website is ellenformayor.com. I have two kids in college. I am not a native of San Francisco, but this is my home. I'm going to die in the city in here. When I elected as mayor, I am an immigrant. When I, as, when I elected as mayor, I will, the first thing I do is review the book of all department heads and how they spend the money and take the money back and spend it on you. I know there's a lot of corruption in there because I work for the government. I represent the government and I know from bottom to the top. And as a mayor, I will, setting a good example for all the San Franciscans, I will give back 50% of my mayor's salary so I can share a program as good neighborhood for all 11 districts. And also, I will appoint all the seven candidates who are running for mayor, so hold them accountable for what they do and what they're telling you today if I'm elected. So, you know, San Francisco is very messy right now with a lot of problems. With sanctuary law and shelter the criminals, with car break-ins, with everything else in there, one person is not able to do a job. The homeless problem we're not able to solve unless we have new housing policy and new homeless policy. When we treat the property owners with fear, they will release the units and give it to the people, especially the local people. When we treat the homeless with dignity and love and give them hope, 60% of them on drug abuse, 15% are working people, and the other 15% are coming from other cities, taking advantage of your resources and my resources. This is a special election. It's only good for a year and a half. I do not know why there's so many people here They spend millions and millions just to get a year and a half mayor. I will not do that for you. I am setting a good example and how we live a life to honor our parents and honor our Lord and you and neighbors supporting each other. Treat us with respect, then we will get things done. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Amy. Whoever becomes mayor of San Francisco must focus on stabilizing and healing our systems, our neighborhoods, and our neighbors in crisis. As Ellen said, there are some great ideas and some capable people that are sitting up here, and we have an opportunity to work together to address these issues. Currently in San Francisco, like I said before, we spend $30 million a year to DPW and SFPD on a move-along strategy that shuffles our homeless residents from block to block. As the founder and director of the St. Francis Homelessness Challenge over the last two and a half years, I focused on developing an actionable strategy to get 3,000 people into safe organized spaces and out of crisis conditions for that same $30 million. There's a proposal to put more police officers on the street. Did you know that 200 new police officers has a price tag of $34 million? I am proposing that instead of 200 new police officers, over the next year and a half, we put 
uh, at, we take the sites, the 100 sites with the highest 311 and 911 crime incidents, and we invest in unarmed programming at that site. We could put $300,000 per site and still have $4 million to administer the program, and this would be a data-based approach. I ran into the director of the planning department today at EuroKing, just ran into him and had a great conversation uh, talking about vacancy taxes, talking about how would we actually implement that. I have a plan to do that, but I don't like just a stick. I like a carrot as well. So if we want people to activate their empty units, the city of San Francisco has to take that approach of supporting property owners with tenant screening, management, and support if they agree to rent at no more than 30% of income. Please check out weissformayor.com and see the outcomes tracker I developed of over 40 deliverables that I can deliver on and you can track me on over the next year and a half as mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you again for this evening together. And let me say it is a real honor to be running with these other candidates up here tonight. We are all trailblazers. We are all glass ceiling breakers. And that means a lot. I'm often asked, what's the difference between me and the other candidates and why should I be asking for your support? Uh, many of us have served on the County Board of Supervisors, as have I. I've also been a small business owner for 40 years, which gives me a first-hand, close-up look at the challenges facing small businesses today. And we must keep our, district, our merchant districts safe and strong and thriving. Uh, I also had six years in the State Assembly, eight years in the State Senate, where I was able to work in a bipartisan fashion to accomplish some important things for San Francisco, including bringing home $120 million to save community college when it was in the depths of its accreditation crisis. Also was able to bring home $500 million to expedite the construction of 3,300 affordable housing units at Trans Bay, Mission Bay, and Hunters Point Shipyard. So the ability to bring people together is something we need in a mayor right now. We're facing serious challenges throughout the city. We don't need to be fighting ideological battles. We need to be thoughtful in creating successful public policy measures so that we can really address and solve the problems facing us today. I am so pleased to have the support of U.S. Senator Kamala Harris and our State Controller Betty Yee, our soon-to-be Treasurer Fiona Ma. A majority of the Board of Supervisors is supporting this candidacy, as well as six of seven members of the Community College Board of Trustees. I have the support of the San Francisco teachers, the community college teachers, the National Union of Healthcare Workers, the Sierra Club, the League, Thank you. League of Confer Conservation Voters. I'd be pleased Thank to have you your support. Much. Thank you. Jane. Um, thank you all so much for joining us on a Monday evening. Um, this is a very important election, uh, really for the ni next nine and a half years here in San Francisco. We have the fastest growing income gap between the rich and the poor in the country, according to the Brookings Institute. And we have a quickly shrinking middle class. In 1990, the middle class made up close to 50% of our population. Middle class being defined as households that make between 50 and $150,000 a year, a huge and very diverse diverse category of people. It has now shrunk down to a third as of 2012, and I'm sure even in the last five years, it has dropped even more than that. We are increasingly becoming a city of the rich, the ultra-rich, and the very, very poor. And we need to make sure that in the next decade, we rethink the path that we're heading on because we are losing our neighbors and our friends here in San Francisco and what we love so much about the city. I have been fighting to build more affordable and middle-income housing to ensure that we can keep our working class and middle-class communities here in San Francisco. I, fight, I fought to make community college free because I want to make sure that higher education, um, there's no barriers to higher education here in San Francisco because we know that expands economic opportunities for all. 
I also currently have a measure on the ballot, Proposition C, to make early childhood education and childcare affordable for every family in San Francisco. And I hope you will vote for that. It is a tax on office landlords that make a million dollars or more. Yes, on Proposition C. I also want to double the number of street cleaners that we have here in San Francisco and double the number of publicly monitored toilets so that people have a place to go to the bathroom with dignity and respect and no one has to step over someone else's urine as they go, over, uh, as they go to work or to school. Um, I've been proud to have the endorsement of the workers of SEIU 10 to 1 and the California Nurses and Sierra Club as well. I would be proud to earn your vote this upcoming election on June 5th. Please check out my Thank platform. Thank you very much. On janekim.org. Thank you. Richie. I want to thank everybody who came here today to listen to all of us uh, speak today. It's a pleasure. I thank everybody. So, uh, again, my name is Richie Greenberg. You can find more information about my campaign and my platform at richiegreenberg.org. I am a San Francisco GOP Republican uh, uh, endorsed candidate. I'm also endorsed by the, the uh, Log Cabin Republicans, which is the LGBT group and the small property owners of San Francisco as well. So uh, I was trying to say at the beginning here that I, am, I have three core values that I'm gonna bring to my candidacy and to bring to the mayor's office. Accountability, uplifting the quality of life, and installing or returning a responsible, uh, respectable uh, amount of law and order. Using these three principles, we can take care of any problem, any issue that we have here in this city. Accountability is very, very important. And what I've learned over the past couple of months, joining my colleagues here and uh, candidates going around to different forums, is that no one was talking about accountability until I started talking about it. It's very interesting and very strange, but this is important on so many levels. We have to ensure that anyone that we appoint, if I'm gonna bring in uh, to my administration, uh, department heads, commission heads, they're going to be accountable to me and I'm going to be accountable to you. This is, the buck stops with me as we'd say, and so I would appreciate your vote June 5th or beforehand for a level-headed, accountable uh, uh, candidate, Richie Greenberg. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michelle. Thanks everyone for coming out, and I just want to remind each of you, you are unique. Each of you more precious than any technology. And I wish that Mario Woods could be here to hear these words because he was killed about a block and a half from where we live. This incident is what got me involved against speaking out against taser weapons, okay? Our cops need to be connected to our community. If they don't live here, they are not connected to our community because they vote, they bring their kids to school, they do everything else wherever they live, which is not in San Francisco. They don't care about San Francisco values. This is why, as San Francisco mayor, I would mandate 60% or more of first responders, cops, firefighters, EMTs, and other municipal workers to live in San Francisco by 2025 for the purpose of a better long-term infrastructure, service, and safety for all San Franciscans. It's important that our first responders have connection to our community. This has not been happening. And as mayor, I would ensure that this occurs because really we're all human beings. Each of us have a body and without a body, you can't be a human being anymore. And that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. Please check out uh, our website, alioto4mayor.com. Um, there have been many, many discussions in uh, these mayoral debates about accountability, and one of them um, that I always uh, want to reiterate is that we have certain department heads in San Francisco um, that I have literally named that I think need to step aside now. Um, like MTA, DPW, and Park and Rec. These are department directors. You, you're not gonna believe how much they wake. 
over $400,000. While we have the sick and dying in the streets of our city, people are making, as a director in the city and county of San Francisco, more than $400,000. I find that to be unconscionable. And they're not doing the job. How many streets have you to seen torn up over and over and over? The same streets. I stopped and asked a worker, why are you tearing this street up again? He said, because it's a sole source contract based on a sole source exemption. I said, what, the guy that digs the hole is a Picasso? A sole source exemption, you've got to be the expert in it. And you know what happens is, it's, it's without a competitive bid. When you don't get a competitive bid, you don't get the good job for the less price. And that's what all these contracts are. In my opinion, it's unconscionable. And, and MTA needs to do something about it. DPW, could you please clean the streets? Clean the streets. Go out and get rid of the needles. I was the legislator of the needle exchange legislation. The exchange has stopped. The exchange has stopped. Our streets are full of needles. And people that are, are using needles on the street cannot be acceptable in a viable city. I wrote the sanctuary law. I banned cigarettes in restaurants. I did some incredible laws during the time that I was president of the Board of Supervisors. And it wasn't me. It was me working with this community. The MBE, LBE, WBE laws for minorities, women, and business, local businesses Thank is you. supposed to be 16%. Thank you. It's 4%. Thank, thank you. you all so much for coming out. And thank you to all of our candidates for being here. We want to thank our co-sponsors for tonight's forum, the Asian American Journalists Association, the Coalition for San Francisco Neighborhoods, the National Coalition for 100 Black Women of San Francisco, San Francisco Beautiful, San Francisco Council of District Merchants Associations, San Francisco Heritage, the Mechanics Institute, the Van Ness Corridor Neighborhoods Coalition, and the San Francisco Wholesale Produce Market. On behalf of myself, the Neighborhood Network, the League of Women Voters, and our party organizations, our thanks to the candidate for participating. And remember, none of any of this matters unless you go out and vote. You can register to vote right there in the back of the Department of Elections. You now have choices for June 5th. Thank you very much. Good thanks evening. Thanks again for coming out, District 10. Thank you. To Bob Butler, KCBS, thank you.